Hello, hello, beautiful Kaivians. How are you doing? Steve van der Paal here, CTO of Kaivio, and I'm here with a amazing August update video. I know I'm a little bit late, uh, but we had a lot of testing to do, and of course, we're still working very hard on Kaivio 2.0. More about that in the end of this video, but just like let's dive into it because we have got a lot of new sexy stuff for you guys. All right, so let me log in and just jump over to my list because I'm sorry I didn't remember all by heart uh, because there is a lot to go through today. All right, let's uh, first start with our most sexy new feature, sell everything in Kaivio. Uh, right now we have de dedicated it as a beta, so we are still uh, working on it. Um, but everything is very well tested. It's just, um, you know, if there's anything um, that you run into, let us know in support and we'll be on top of that. Uh, but let's have a look at it. It's already been announced by Neil in another video, uh, so I'll go through it a little bit faster. Uh, we also have it, of course, in our blog post. But let's uh, jump over to over here and let me show it to you. Let's quickly log in and then we go to smart memberships. That's where the products are at. So these are existing uh, products that aren't active, but I will just use them to kind of show it to you quickly. All right, so the first thing you can notice here is now this is a little different. Uh, over here, product type, uh, it's a drop down now. So you can choose to membership, uh, what it always was selling uh, access to memberships, a download or a webhook. Now, if you're starting a new product, you only see the fir th first, sorry, three steps, and then when you save it, you get the step one before and five. Uh, but because this, I'm editing a product here, you'll see all five instantly. So let's switch it to download. So you can see here, step five is only also switched to download. And that will be the delivery. So it's really easy, uh, just drag and drop files or click this button over here. At the moment, we support all these extensions. If you need another extension, uh, hit up support uh, and tell us why and what your uh, angle is. And then we can have a look at adding it. And currently, the max file size is 100 um, megabytes. If you need more, uh, again, contact us at support as to why you need more than 100 MB. Uh, we figured 100 MB would be. Uh, sufficient uh, for like 99% of all use cases uh, here but if yours isn't just let us know and we'll work with you no problem there uh, you can only upload one file uh, per product uh, so that's kind of important for now uh, that is a limitation we won't have a Kaiver 2.0 uh, but uh, you know for technical reasons that was just necessary here uh, th basically this this whole update is an in-between step between Kaivio 1.0 and Kaivio 2.0, so you get kind of get used to the new differences, and you know it's, it's just inc incredibly powerful to already start using for your business. Uh, so yeah, up, up, uploading is done here. And then of course you need to also set your delivery email uh, that will deliver the download link to your buyers. Uh, over here you can see the the, the short code for the download link. Uh, don't change it except for uh, over here, this text. Click here to download. You can change that uh, in your own language, for example, or whatever text you want it to be. Um, just don't um, use any uh, quotes or single uh, double quotes, please. Uh, maybe double quotes will work. If actually, maybe the I assume our testers would have tested that, but uh, just you know, keep it keep it plain text there. That will be the best anyway. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, make sure you set your email content, your HTML version, and your plain text but better for deliverability, and you're good to go there. That's it. Really cool. Uh, then let's have a look at the second one, the webhook. So the webhook is a little bit more advanced, and that will almost most likely need a developer from your side. Uh, what does, does that mean, a webhook? So basically, you generate a secret key um, that uh, that's basically a check if uh, to make sure that the notification comes from our platform and not from some hacker uh, trying to get access to your products for free. So it's really important that that's implemented correctly. There's a link over here with all the technical details for your developer. And over here, you just input uh, your webhook URL. So uh, make sure to use HTTPS, not HTTP, uh, just yoursystem.com slash receive or I don't know, uh, webhook.php or dot whatever um, language you're using. And uh, basically every transaction that we receive for your product, so that can be a new sale, a refund, a dispute, whatever, 
uh, we will just basically forward as it is to your system. Uh, that means if you choose to accept PayPal payments, uh, it will be uh, per documentation of PayPal uh, as the, the structure of the data in the, in the IPN, the instant payment notification. Um, same thing for Stripe. If you use that, you have to look at the Stripe documentation, etc. This means that you can sell everything with Kyvia now, even physical products, access to software, uh, anything you can think of basically because you will be in complete control of handling what needs to happen after a sale or any transaction notification. Uh, really, really powerful. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, some tools for your developer to get it tested and everything, very important of course. So there's a button over here, you can test your webhook and then a log uh, as to um, what happening and what, everything that we, are, we can see from our side. So that makes uh, the life of your developer a lot easier to implement uh, the webhook for you. So that's that, I hope you love it, it's extremely powerful, I guess I strongly recommend that you start using it already. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, let's move over to the next one because we still have a lot to go. Um, one that has been uh, requested quite a bit on feedback.kaivio.com and it has to do with the theme editor um, for the membership uh, area. So let's have a look over there. Uh, so in, in this case we have this one activated. So let's just hit customize button. And as you can see here, uh, this is our left menu and before you could set your own links over here in the header menu but not in the left menu and that we have added now here you go left menu and you can add uh, anything anything uh, wait wait uh, google.com new save changes and there you go uh, you have a link you can of course also remove them and that's that so really easy to use and uh, you can just fully uh, control the left menu over here and if you wanted to add a banner like for a cross sell or upsell or whatever uh, you can add your custom HTML here as well which will then also show here. Um, I not remember 100% if this was new or not in this uh, in, in, in August uh, but it is fairly new uh, so you can also do this with custom uh, links in the footer now and the header already existed uh, before of course when you're done always uh, hit save settings and you know you can close it down here again so that's that I hope you really like that as well it was requested by a lot of people uh, so that's why we of course listened and implemented it for you uh, then we have uh, two new features that are really cool for our marketers out there. Uh, so let's have a look. That is in Smart Funnels. There we go. Um, I'm just going to take this funnel over here. Sales page would have a, a video in it for sure. All right. Oh, this is a, I see a very old sales page isn't being used anymore, but no matter. Uh, what I wanted to show you is just right here. So we already had the autoplay function, but with Chrome update uh, since eh, quite a while ago, um, it wasn't autoplaying anymore uh, because uh, Chrome didn't like that. We now have a new feature called Force Autoplay. What that means is that the video will, the audio will be uh, muted, and then it will autoplay. Uh, then we add it. Uh, then we will. Add, the system will just add a um, overlay, an invisible overlay over the whole page. Um, and then when the moment the, the visitor clicks anywhere, so it doesn't need to click on the video, but just basically anywhere, and they will always click as so at some point somewhere. Uh, people like clicking. So uh, and that, at that very moment, we will catch that click. Uh, the video will restart with audio, and it will autoplay. So it's it's like a kind of a, a workaround basically. It's the best we can do for uh, for Chrome, um, for sure. So yeah, really cool uh, functionality for all the marketers out there. And then we also have another new feature here that says make sticky video. Uh, we already had this with instructions in our FAQ, uh, but now we just made it a easy to use function. So you basically just click it and your video will become sticky, meaning uh, when you scroll down, it uh, with the, the video will move uh, over here and we'll just keep playing. Uh, really powerful uh, if you're using VSLs or any other sales videos um, in your pages. So that is that. I hope you really, really like that uh, because I know Neil definitely does and he's already uh, uh, using it in a lot of uh, our funnels. All right, let's exit here 
and go to the next point. Um, all right, the SPF and DKIM uh, EF features for email sending, really powerful. Uh, it sounds a little bit technical, but I strongly recommend to all your Kyvians uh, to start using that ASAP to implement it. So you go to Smart Mailer, and then you just uh, jump over to SMTP Setup, and you can find it over here, DKIM. DKIM is basically a, a cryptographic uh, method for validating uh, emails you sent that they are actually sent by you. Uh, an older technology is called SPF. Uh, it wasn't very effective. Um, so they created DKIM, which is a, a lot more effective. Um, some providers still use SPF, like Yahoo is really, really old and they apparently don't really want to update. Uh, so it, it's still useful to add, uh, but DKIM is where it's at basically. So um, if you enable it, and you just click that button what I just clicked and you can see all the um, instructions. Uh, so uh, this is basically uh, encrypted over here, the data based on your domain. Uh, what matters here is your sending domain, of course. Um, and over here you can see some instructions for SPF entry as well, which is like a super generic entry, uh, which just basically says, uh, well, all senders are permitted. Um, it's just kind of a, a simple way around SPF because it's like I mentioned, it's not uh, used by most modern uh, email, pro email providers anymore. Uh, but the DKIM is, so that's the one that's really important. Um, so to do this encryption uh, based on your domain, we create a public key and a private key. Um, you don't really need to use it, um, but you know, for full transparency, G GDPR, and stuff like that, uh, we offer you that data because we don't want to lock you in uh, in Kyiv. That's not what we do here. Uh, so you can just download those files. I would recommend you to download them and just keep them safe somewhere. It doesn't matter if you don't really know what to do with them, but you know, you should have them in your possession. That's it. Uh, when you're done, when you've all set this up, um, you know, DNS changes normally take like two hours, but maximum 24. Uh, and then definitely always use mailtester.com. Um, just send a broadcast uh, with you know with your own email to test, and uh, also with uh, and a testing email from mailtester, and see if everything is uh, okay there. If not, uh, you know you need to fix it, of course. If that's too technical for you, um, just contact our support. Um, share the, the 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 result link from mailtester so we can have a look at it for you and help you out to make sure uh, your deliverability is as best as it can be. Um, because, you know, it's important for the revenue of your business. So that's, I really strongly recommend you guys to set that up as soon as possible if you're using SmartMater. All right, next one. Um, last one of the hot new features is another quite technical one. Uh, we have added a PDT data. So that means purchase data is now available on your thank you pages. Uh, the thank you page you set after a purchase, it must be a purchase, otherwise data won't be available, uh, is now, uh, you know, you can access that data in JavaScript. So I'm going to show you uh, some screenshots here because, uh, you know, you can only access the data if you actually make a purchase, and I don't want to do that in this video. Uh, it takes too much time. Uh, but here you go. Um, this is a, a screenshot of a thank you page after an actual purchase. And this is uh, over here is the data that you get access to on that page, meaning uh, you know the amount, uh, you know the email of the buyer, you know the full name of the buyer, you know the product that was bought, uh, transaction ID is a little bit more technical, and there's a, a price variant ID uh, in there as well. It doesn't show in this particular test, but we added that a little later. Uh, so you can use that to um, personalize that page uh, with the name of the product and stuff like that. That's quite cool. Uh, but also more important for some third-party um, integrations that was necessary. That's why we actually built it. Uh, we had a special um, custom client that required integration with, uh, what was it called? PAP. It's like an affiliate um, tracking software. Uh, Post Affiliate Pro, I think it was. Um, and that re required that data uh, to be there and then actually to be integrated with uh, a JavaScript stack from them. So to use it for yourself, uh, you need somebody with a little bit of uh, JavaScript uh, knowledge. Very little though, it's really easy. All you have to do is uh, go to the footer script on your page, on your thank you page, and then add this little script over here, and then you will see all the data. Uh, of course, nothing happens with this little code. It's just to show what's available to you, uh, and then you know uh, your uh, JavaScript developer 
uh, like even a super junior can really easily do whatever you need to be done there. It's it's super easy to use. Kaiver order is just an object, as you can see here, uh, with the the various keys: amount, email, full name, product name, transaction ID, uh, and the last one is price variant ID or pri product ID. I think uh, we've called it, uh, and then you can just use it however you want. So very powerful there as well. So I hope you like that. Uh, if you need any help implementing something like that, uh, just contact support. Uh, note though, we won't be doing the programming for you. You need somebody uh, for that. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, uh, any uh, anybody with a little bit of JavaScript code can do that. Um, all right, let's go over. Oh yeah, Post Affiliate Pro. That was the one. Uh, let's go over the improvements. Uh, so first one is uh, we already uh, um, uh, announced it on the Facebook group, and I think by email as well. Um, we upgraded our complete Stripe integration uh, to support SCA. Um, if you do business in Europe or sell to Europe or your European business, it's uh, a very important change that's coming up in a few days. Uh, we already have this for like two weeks already, uh, but it's um, yeah strong uh, customer authentication. Uh, I know in the UK it's already been extended, but I know also in Germany it isn't and it won't be either. Uh, so like I know there's some people saying like oh don't worry about it, uh, half of Europe is extending it. No, it's not true. Uh, this far as far as I know, it's only the UK extending it, uh, and there's a lot of banks that like even if like by political decision it is extended uh, they still in are implementing it on the deadline um, because you know they have it ready uh, and uh, you know that's important that's when you need to be able um, to manage it so uh, for Stripe we did read it the integration completely so we fully support that we checked with, pay uh, with uh, PayPal uh, that was going to be managed completely on their side they said no, no changes needed on our side and yeah if you're using any of those uh, other platforms like JVZoo, Clickbank uh, those are American companies obviously and they uh, unfortunately often don't really care too much about this kind of stuff so you have to be careful with those so you have to really uh, check with them uh, in order you know what if they're doing anything or, or whatever um, I would imagine a Clickbank to do something but I will also imagine that JVZoo is absolutely not ready for that uh, so yeah it's it's important that you t you take your responsibility there as well um then in general uh, improvement um we added uh, error notifications in case of automations that you've set up uh, fails for any reason. So, for example, you had a integration set up, uh, which uh, a one automation relied upon, and then you removed the integration, or the integration just stopped working. Maybe you changed your password or whatever. Um, before we didn't have any specific error notifications, uh, and now we do. So it kind of helps you keep track of that. So you know. Um, Always make sure that you know you check your your notification. I know we have a lot uh, that show unread here, but uh, we do check them uh, regularly, and then we just mark them complete. Uh, it's, it's it's still an, uh, almost every notification we send is important. Uh, so you know always be aware of that and make sure you check them. Um, then smart memberships when adding members manually wasn't accepting spaces in the country of city yeah a little bit of a stupid I issue of course uh, that we uh, quickly fixed as soon as we found out uh, because there's many countries or cities that have spaces it's only when adding uh, members manually by the way automatically that wasn't an issue uh, then we completely rewritten the pixabay integration as well uh, before it was just linking via their API to uh, files hosted on their site uh, but sometimes the API was down or slow or uh, images were removed stuff like that so we completely rewritten it when you ch uh, choose a uh, Pixabay image on one of your pages uh, we actually download the image um, we resize the image because a lot of the times they are like super high resolution which is not necessary and only bad for, for websites um, so we uh, downsize that a little bit, we optimize the image and then we serve it uh, from our CDNs that will make it a lot faster and the images won't go missing all of the sudden um, at random moments because of the Pixabay API. Uh, so that makes the Pixabay integration a lot more powerful. Uh, then we have smart members. Uh, member export have been improved. Yeah, for some of the uh, the more successful Kaivians, uh, they had a huge list of uh, members in their account, and they tried to export them, um, but uh, it timed out while doing the export. So we fixed that as well. 
uh, so that won't be a problem going forward anymore. Again, uh, we at Kaivio, we think transparency is super important and we're not trying to lock you in uh, whatsoever. You own your data and you know uh, such functionalities as exporting stuff uh, needs to work properly uh, so that we fix that really quickly. Uh, then bug fixes, we have about 10 bugs as well, so let's drive through them. Uh, Smart Mailer, we had a, um, a small broadcast overview just for Mac. Um, this is actually a, an ongoing thing. Let me just quickly go, oh, I'm already in um, Smart Mailer. Let's go broadcasts here. So for this table over here, um, for uh, Mac, it didn't look correct with, uh, with the subject. Uh, it was over uh, overlaying the rest, so it looked a bit messy. Uh, so we fixed that, but now um, we were talking internally and with some uh, users as well. You know, a lot of users want to like do, do control F search, for example, on the subject or on the lists, um, like uh, on this list, and you only, it only shows uh, uh, this data partially, so that can be a little bit uh, annoying. Uh, and yeah, there is definitely some space left. We can kind of squeeze it and make it bigger and stuff like that, but that's not really nice on the eyes. Um, so in the Facebook group, uh, we have a proposal um, which we'll be implementing. So we asked in the Facebook group, hey, uh, which of the options do you think is better or do you even have a completely different suggestion that you think is better? Uh, and that's what we're doing. So if you still want to weigh into that, just go to the Facebook group and check that out. Um, it was posted by me, by Stephen, uh, so I'll just check out my post and reply there if you want to. Uh, but the plan now is to basically make this field over here uh, full 100% width and then all this other data uh, in a sub uh, line below that. Uh, that will lose a little bit of an overview because every email then will be have a higher height. Um, so it won't, like scrolling will be longer. Uh, but still, I think it will help um, a general overview. It's just uh, like the, the the bird's eye overview will be a little bit less uh, than before. But, you know, most people in the Facebook group, or basically all people actually that replied there, they said they, um, they preferred that solution. So uh, for now, that's what we'll go with. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. If a, pri a product price variant was set to paid first and changed to free, uh, the price would still show on uh, free registration or on the registration page for the membership access. Uh, we fixed that quickly. Uh, I remember that one indeed. Uh, it was the beginning of August actually. Um, smart memberships, uh, first time product, uh, uh, product content thumbnail, the thumbnail did not show until the page refresh. Small, small issue of course, but yeah, fixed. Uh, smart memberships, a payment integration was obligatory for uh, working with registration page even if it was set to free only for the first time setup, so kind of specific situation. But still, you know, if you if you get into smart memberships and you want to set up your first free re uh, free membership site page, you shouldn't uh, have to have an, uh, an integration with a payment provider. So uh, that's not necessary anymore. We fixed that. Uh, the marketing gra graphics folder and the media manager was unavailable. We fixed that. Uh, there was a, a bad link to Stripe integration guide uh, in our support area. We fixed that. Um, smart memberships, uh, very specific scenarios. It, was po it wasn't possible to purchase multiple products in one membership on the same email. Uh, it shouldn't have happened, of course, but yeah, it was really specific, but still fixed. Uh, general in some situations, oh yeah, um, if you didn't have a, a second name, a last name uh, with an active campaign integration, the first name was actually uh, used twice. Uh, of course, it wasn't correct, so we fixed that as well. And then smart mailer segment uh, stats counts were a little bit off in specific situations, so we fixed that as well. And then last but not least, uh, some split testing bugs, some usability issues there uh, that we fixed um, in August as well. So that's it, a huge list, about 10 bug fixes, about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 improvements, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 really, really nice new features in August. So I hope you like it. Um, I think it's been a quite a long video with a lot of stuff, but uh, quickly, uh, Kaiju 2.0 update as well, as always, uh, as promised. So we have some really good news first. Um, our DevOps, uh, so our uh, staging and production uh, environments are ready. So a huge milestone for us. Um, 
and yeah i'm, I'm so of course super happy with that however uh, on the flip side there is a little bit of bad news as well uh, we had some issues with uh, some of our front-end developers uh, we had to fire two of them because of uh, poor performance uh, they were marking tasks complete and they were faking uh, parts uh, just for the testers purposes uh, so they could you know they, they were checking it and uh, yeah it works fine and then it was marked as complete uh, but they were basically hard coding uh, some data which should have come uh, dynamically from the database so they weren't doing their job uh, correctly at all uh, so that was kind of a setback. I think we got set back like about four weeks. Uh, we've been fixing it for like one and a half week now. So another two and a half weeks to go. I hopefully most of that uh, will be uh, back on track again. Uh, so that's definitely a bit of a setback, uh, which, yeah, honestly, it pissed me off uh, quite a bit uh, that I missed it. It's uh, like big time, a big part of my responsibility, of course, as well. And that, you know, I trusted people and they definitely uh, abused my trust. And that's uh, something I hate even more, of course. But we will get uh, past that. And of course, uh, our whole front end is based on React uh, JS, uh, and they have had some bigger updates for themselves as well. So we are also uh, using this opportunity um, to start using uh, some of the new technology offered by React to make sure um, the Kaiju 2.0 code is really 100% uh, there for you guys when we release it. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that's the update. Uh, oh yeah, we also started uh, the, the, the new testing uh, procedures. Uh, so we we came up with a whole new testing strategy, a lot more professional than it's ever been. A lot of more automated testing um, using some softwares and also um, in, in integrated in our deployment phases. Um, so that's going to be really powerful. Uh, good news on that as well, actually, because I saw that testers uh, are uh, keep finding uh, they still keep finding bugs of course but all the new bugs that I've been seeing the last week specifically uh, have been low priority bugs so small things those small things also need to f get fixed of course but that means uh, they ran out of finding bigger issues to f uh, to find with software so that's good news actually so um, yeah I can't wait to get rid of that list of uh, of bugs that we have currently uh, for Kaiju 2.0 uh, so that we can start uh, inviting the first users because, uh, yeah, we are super looking forward to that. The whole team, uh, we've been working on this for quite a long time and everybody's really, really excited to get Kaiju 2.0 uh, no, in your hands. All right, thank you so much for your attention and I will be uh, appearing to you on the video uh, at the end of September, of course, as always. All right, thank you so much. Steven out. Cheers.